Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. And we are back just like that. We are back. It is Mother's Day for us. It will be Monday when you guys are hearing this, but this is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. A little sad for me, though, Mother's Day. both of us. Sometimes I forget that I'm a mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's my day, too, because my whole life... Even when I was a mom, when my mom was here, it was still her day over my her. day. Yeah, so it's weird. And I've told you, like, all week long, I keep having this feeling like, oh, my God, what am I going to get my mom for Mother's Day? Or I didn't get her a Mother's Day gift yet. Yeah. And it was like, oh. I Like, I keep having, like, when you have a feeling you're forgetting something, mm-hmm. I keep feeling like I'm forgetting something. And it's just because, and this is not my first Mother's Day without her, but yeah, it's because, I don't know. It's the second one. You miss her. You're thinking about her. She's on your mind. It is sad, but I got my, what do we have here? Nespresso. We're back to Nespresso. Espresso. Got a little dollop in there. Cheers. Yep. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. It was nice warm weather out here in the Well, by the time they're listening to this, they're irritated that you said that because they're on a Monday. On a Monday. (laughs) They need to, they need to gear up for a good successful week. That's true. Not thinking about the weekend anymore. Weekend is in the past. It's all right. It's okay to look back and say hey, it was a nice weekend. Yeah, but weekend. it's but Mondays. You know what though? But Monday people should tackle Monday. Think more positively about yes, Monday. Yes, yes. Don't think negative. Yeah, I think it's a new week. Yeah, a f- clean slate. Yep. A time to be tighten some things good down. Day. What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish this week? Yeah. You want to tighten down your diet? I don't diet? think Monday's my least favorite day. I think my least favorite day is like Tuesday and Wednesday. Like I don't love Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Too far away from the weekend. It lost that freshness of a Monday. But Thursday, you start to get excited for the weekend. We do the podcast. So we start talking about Friday already. Now, and- now we're in a bubble because me and you grew up in America. Is, is the weekends exciting everywhere around the world? You know what I mean? Is, is it a, such a big deal? I think so. You think so? Probably. Oh, you know curious. that there's a campaign um, out to, like, because the standard work week is known as Monday through Friday. Yes. There's a campaign of uh, people out there that are trying to get that change to four day work weeks. I always, I always like. I did four tens when I did security. I, I like think that. four tens is yeah. ideal. Yeah. You're ideal. a little tired, but you'll survive. N- to, to me, ten hours is what I do anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Three, but I, you, yeah. You get three days off, and yeah. then get three days off. You know why? Because how are people supposed to get their errands done? Yeah. If their off time is only a Saturday and a Sunday, what about doctor's appointments mm-hmm. and grocery shopping and errands? Yeah. They need an errand day. Exactly. One day dedicated. One you day to. dedicated to errands. <clears throat> you schedule Post-talk. all your, yeah. your the dental appointments and your kids' things and conferences. You schedule that on like your errands day. And then your weekend is like family time. Yeah. I think that would be great. And I think a lot of companies are having to adopt that now in order to be competitive in the work market. Huh. It's crazy that it's flipping the other way around. It's flipping. The people are taking back their power a little bit. And they're like, wait, no. Oh, you don't have a hybrid schedule? No, thank you. I'm not interested in your job. They want hybrid schedules where they don't have to be in the office every day. Again, that makes absolute sense and today listen 25 years ago yeah it didn't make sense it was very unusual to to have a work from home job even 20 years ago 15 years ago Mm -hmm. but with technology games changed yes big time now i do believe it's important to get in there a little bit it's good for like team building and things like that but it depends on your position yeah and for as many hours as you spend on calls anyway and a lot on zoom calls like you're in your cubicle on zoom calls you may as well be at home and have gained back some time i used to commute really far to work and that's what's even worse right there the, the bad part is not only got to be at work all day which get it you're getting paid mm-hmm. but the commute man especially if you live where we live in the barrier mm-hmm. or or people or I'm sure we have a lot of listeners or something out there. It's it's just horrible. Yeah. A lot of our listeners probably listen to us during um, their commute. Mm -hmm. You know what Apple does, which is genius. Like we're in the Bay Area. You guys, Apple is big out here in the Bay Area. This is their corporate headquarters. 
And my sister works for Apple, so she told me what they do, which is so cool. They have these commuter vans. They have they they pick up their employees like in these commuter yeah. vans, or they have like, these pickup points. Yeah. And even the if it's like a two that. hour drive into the office or something, these commuter vans are not like what you think of. Okay, they are like office on wheels. So she gets into her little in her commuter van and she Logs plugs in, in her laptop and she right starts work. working. So the work day actually starts when she gets in the van. That is genius by them. Yeah. There's no time wasted. She said it's the best. Like on her way home. No time wasted. She's, if she's done with work for the day, she'll like schedule appointments, do online shopping, do order her groceries. And yeah. it's now no longer dead time. No. Isn't that amazing what they yeah. do for their employees? Mm-hmm. They do that. And I think it's, it's free. Genius. But you know what? They're smart. They're going to get more work out of their employees. They're going to get more value for the, they, most of them are salary, right? They're not paid hourly. So they're going, but they're going to work more hours. It's genius. Yeah. Apple's worth like one point something trillion. They're like, I think the richest company out there. It's That's insane. Crazy. Beautiful. That, that is... company's crazy, man. It's just a, that innovation. You know how far they've come. Started with the little uh, MP3 player. In the phone, remember that well, was the little... computer. They had it. My brother had one of the first Apple computers. I remember it. Uh huh. And then they evolved into the little MP3s and the phones. They just it's like and nonstop. The iPad and the yeah, they don't iPad stop. Just like we were talking about last week. Everything like, they don't stop. They'll just keep innovating and yes. innovating. Yes. It's crazy. I it's know. Crazy. Um, my menopause symptoms are in a full swing right now. I am in the throes of it. Damn. I feel I'm getting the hot. I know we talked about it a couple of days ago, but. Every day, like I noticing, so I'm noticing specific symptoms. It's really cool because a lot of my clients and a lot of the people who follow me, they're right in this place in their life. So uh-huh. I can really, finally, like really relate. Yes, you know now. Yeah, and it's good. It's good because and you know what to do as well. I'm sure you're yeah, going to learn. You're I'm learn. going to learn because um, I've looked up some supplements that can help alleviate the symptoms. So, um, definitely, my energy is lower. But it is probably a direct result of my sleep isn't as good. It, you awaken very easily and you don't go to, you don't fall asleep. It's so frustrating because you're tired, but you don't fall asleep. Yeah, that sucks. And um, it's trouble staying asleep and then the hot flashes. Now, I haven't experienced weight gain or any of that because I follow macronutrients. So it doesn't matter whether my energy is lower or I follow a schedule for working out. I follow a step goal and I follow macronutrients. So I've circumvented that. Now, yeah. had I not been, yeah, this is the point in time where I would start putting on weight. Why? Because I'm not sleeping and then my mood is bad. Then I don't want then I don't work out. Then I walk less yeah. steps. I when you don't sleep good, you crave more. It's a little yes. harder to stay in the deficit. Yeah. Or slipping. You, you, letting, letting off the Yeah, you get your cravings are higher mm-hmm. your when you you don't sleep well. So big time. Now more than ever it's imperative to be following like a specific lifestyle but the other stuff i still experience but i did do some research on some supplements so i'm going to order we have b vitamins a super b complex so i haven't been taking those but i'm going to start taking those i'm going to add those to my routine and then magnesium l-glycinate i take l-theranate for sleep but it also says l-glycinate specifically for menopause symptoms so i'll hmm. try it so if you're following your macronutrients and you're not overeating you're in menopause, you're not gaining weight. No, none of those symptoms will cause miraculous weight gain. And that's the biggest misconception about menopause. Uh-huh. Yes. People think menopause yes. causes weight gain. No, it doesn't actually. Ms. Bustin. Menopause causes side effects that lead to behaviors that cause weight gain. There you have it. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions. And the <clears throat> perception is that you gain weight rapidly. It's not that it's rapidly, but it is more concentrated into your abdomen because of the fluctuations in your hormones. And it seems like it's more weight than it is because it's concentrated to your abdomen. You know what I mean? So look, if you gain five pounds and it's spread from your forehead to your toes, you're going to hardly notice that five pounds. You gain five pounds and it's all in your abdomen. It's going to feel like like 20. Yes. Feel like you're lugging a chunk of yeah, food. That's in what there. I did experience in December. Like I put on a couple pounds, maybe four pounds or something like that. It went all to my midsection where I couldn't button my jeans. It's like I wasn't, I didn't gain much weight, 
but I couldn't button my jeans. Damn. I've never gained four pounds and had to get a different size pants. That's crazy. Yeah. Usually you could still fit in your same clothes, but I lost it very fast and it came right back off. It doesn't stop you from being able to lose weight either. Why did they have to make us this way? Why will you have to go through menopause? And why do men's testosterone got to go? The hot over? flashes have been the worst because it comes out of nowhere and it feels like you're yeah, like, I saw like that the yesterday. burner inside of you just gets flicked on and just went. Yeah. And I feel like my mood too. But I don't know if it's because of Mother's Day is coming or just like my mood. I've just been sad. But I, it's probably both. It's probably a mixture, yeah. but I definitely feel like it affects the mood. But yeah, so anyways, there, there's that exciting news, guys, in the world of menopause. But stay tuned because I'll give you more. Yeah. Now, I want to have my hormones checked, and I want to talk to my doctor about hormone replacement therapy if I need nice. it. I'm not necessarily – it's earlier on the range of menopause, but not considered early menopause because I'm 47 – Early menopause is 45 or younger. Oh. So I'm right there at the beginning. It is early, though. And it's interesting because my mom didn't go into menopause until her 50s. Yeah. But, but here I am. Your mom also didn't take. Yeah, I know. I know what you're going to say. I don't want to get into that. Yeah. All right. So we went to a new restaurant in San Jose yesterday. Yes, we did. A friend of yours is has a group of investors and they opened a restaurant yes you want to talk about partnership it? yeah my boy johnny opened up called uh, el cabron yeah el cabron remember we were trying to figure out what that means yeah it's downtown san jose uh i don't know the address off my head but you can look it up you can google it it is i'll put it up on the screen up yeah. for youtube it is steps away from san pedro square yes you just cross cross the street yeah there's a there's it's literally out the street from a, a bar nightclub whatever you want to call it or a day club it's called myth yeah so if you're from the bay area myth it's yeah. right next to myth pretty much it's like on the corner on the other corner yes right up the from street. myth i love the ambiance very instagrammable ambiance yes it's cool it has like really yes. cool like murals and like photo op spots yeah. loved the chips and guac you know the chips and guac were that's fire. very important to me if a, a Mexican restaurant must have excellent chips and guac, yes, or I will not want to go there. Facts. That's number one. And then I had the chicken tacos, very clean. If you're looking for a clean dish, the tacos were like the meat was so good, yes. chopped in my chicken tacos was chopped chicken breast. It wasn't some like soupy, ultra marinated. You know, sometimes they do that. I don't like it. I know what you mean. The tikka it's like or in the something. Juices, yeah, yeah, I don't like that when they do that. It's just grilled chicken breast. So it's grilled chicken breast, and they give you a little side thing with onions and cilantro, and look like homemade corn tortillas. It was delicious, yeah. and the steak. You had the steak. Steak was good. The steak, steak looked tacos, good. Tacos, yes. Next time I go, I want to get the steak salad because the steak looked amazing. And how was the churros? Oh man, the churros and ice cream. Yeah, the dessert. Delicious. <sighs> delicious. Yeah. So, yeah, we enjoyed that. So if you want to check out potentially a new spot in San Jose, check it out. I'll put it up on the screen, and then I'll tag their Instagram in the show notes. Yeah, well. I'm not sure exactly when they're going to open. That was just a, for friends and family. Yeah, I think next weekend. Oh, next okay. Yeah, so next weekend they should be open. I think they're going to do, like, brunches. Yes. And it's open-air restaurant, which I love. So it's all open. Yes, like doors open. And the, yeah, I love that. It's going to be warm outside. during the day, right? It's going to be like AC inside or fans and then the warm heat. Yeah, Summer's it's like here. inside outside feeling yeah. to it. Really cool. But yeah, anyways, we did that. And then we walked around. San, San Jose is popping. That's what I have to say. San Pedro Square is popping. Yeah, we'll it get came out alive again we'll or get something. Out there at night. No, but there was so many people out and about. Normally we're a Santana Row people. But I'm like, man, I think I, I want to be a San Jose Back to my roots. Right here. Closer stay, to home, too. Stay home in San Ho because there was a lot of people, a lot of options. There, lot We went to this one spot. It is What's the it straight Dr. Funk. Yeah, Dr. Funk. Let me tell it's you, it is a tiki restaurant. bar. Yeah. But when you do not, when you walk inside this place, you do not know what time of day it is, where you are, what city, what state, what country, and what season you're like enclosed yes it's a very interesting vibe yeah but it's a tiki bar very 
over the top decorations. There, it's a rum bar, so they specialize in rum drinks. And boy, they're strong. Yeah, if you want to go, wow. Actually, we should have told Tyler that'd be a good place for his friends to get a drink and be intoxicated. Yeah, what did we get a puka punch? Was called puka punch. Yeah, for one, we I took two one. sips. Yeah, we and I w- it went straight to the noggin. We didn't even finish it. But they the have, strong. at this place, Dr. Funk, they have those huge drinks where they put straws in it. and Yeah. And then we had a little appetizer there. We did a little crawl. It was almost like we did a little crawl there. Because we went to the, we ate at El Cabron, and then we had the fries at How many the options are there down there? It's crazy. You have sushi, you have Mexican, La Oya, you got Dr. Funk. Their menu was interesting, burger, fries. Then, then there's the Irish spot. Irish spot, which usually wings and chicken. There's the Farmer's Union, which has amazing food, too. Yeah, they got a dumpling, Japanese barbecue. And then you got that inside that little... District. And then there's inside, there's a bunch. There's like a food court thing. What is that place called? I can't I think of what it's called. There's. It's almost like an, a food you go, court. You go walk right past Spaghetti Factory. You'll know. You'll see. Yeah, it. it's very cool. Anyway, so there's a lot going on a lot of options very interesting very I, there's a place called the social that's bowling and yeah i want to go there and check it out yes, just to see what it's should. about look cool look at that downtown san jose is alive but what i like and are you like this too i think you are i like to see people out and about of with their dogs and happy yes. and walking around and bringing my dog and yes. sitting and i don't know it just like when i walk through a place and there's nobody there or it's like very quiet or there's not a lot of people i sad there's a time and place for that yeah i don't know i just don't like it i like to you i like, like, a, po- a, like pulse. a pulse yeah yes i like a pulse that. i like a pulse it's actually right by the downtown orange theory mm. that's over there somewhere yeah not too far from there you know yeah i think I'll, we'll be venturing back out to san jose yeah no, back out to San Jose. We live in San Jose, but back back downtown. It's downtown. I know. And it's really just so it's close. easy. You just drive Island Rock all the way down. Yeah, it's, it's close for us downtown. I never used to spend a lot of time downtown. I don't like driving. I, I don't know. I was afraid to drive you downtown. You know what's crazy is me not being from San Jose, I spend a hell of time downtown. Cruising, partying, bouncing. When you lived in San Francisco? I was a bouncer, too. In San Jose? Yes, for Club Wild, for Jenny. But did you live in San Francisco at the time? Yep. So you commuted. Yeah, me and wow. Mo. Me and Mo would come up. We'd take turns. Sometimes he drives when I drive. It was fun. Something to do. Interesting. Yeah. So. All right. Speaking of driving, do you, what do you feel about, what's your opinion on, let's talk about gender roles a little bit on driving. So do you think men should drive more than women or do you get annoyed when I always want to be the passenger person? Princess? Uh, that's a good question. I got to give that some thought. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, it, it's basically. I don't get annoyed because I, I don't mind driving. To yeah. Me. I don't know. It's an interesting question. What made you? Well, I was just, because I was listening to something. Uh, it was another podcast on chivalry. And that was just one of the things. Like, do you drive? And it Because is chivalry dead, basically? Because like, now it's very... You have to be scared. It's a little nerve wracking. You can't assume gender roles anymore. People get weird. Oh, gender roles like a women raise the kids, men take care of the family. You can't like assume gender roles anymore because we're progressive now. There, so women the, take on manly duties, men take on womenly duties. So because of that, is chivalry dead? And chivalry is you know things like opening the door for hmm. a woman yeah. or keeping them safe, keeping them on the inside of the sidewalk instead of the outside, things like that. Is chivalry being a man dead? Driving, doing the driving, pumping gas. Yeah. What are your thoughts on chivalry? Do you think it's dead? Mm. Or do you think it's important? I don't know if it's dead. It's just different. The yeah. Technology change. What do I why do I gotta walk around and open up your door when click remote? <laughs> you open up your own door. <laughs> You've never opened my door. That's for sure. Never, not even from day one. No, probably. But not. I don't really, I don't, I don't really not, I, listen, need not my, my door thing. I'm not going to pretend. Some people have their things like they bring you flowers every day. Like I told you, some people overkill on love, but <laughs> is it really love? I think when people go overboard on something, yeah. they're just trying to I think compensate. it's important. Here's my take on But I do, I do agree. You shouldn't pump gas. Maybe I shouldn't be with you. Hmm? I said you shouldn't pump gas alone. Maybe I should be with you for safety reasons. No, it's not about safety. But you mean do you are you okay with that? This was a big debate on this podcast I listened to. You're perfectly fine just sitting in the car while I get out of the car and pump the gas. 
doesn't bother them if you want to. You've done it. I've done no, it. No, I know. But that was one of the things like some there was the guy on this particular podcast was saying that that's a red flag. If you are dating someone and you pull up to a pump and get out and he lets you pump your own gas, that is a bad sign. <laughs> so, hold up. What if that same person goes to the pump by herself and she pumps her own gas? Then what? So because if she's so because, by herself, because a man is in the passenger side, he has to he pump should, her gas. He should, yeah, at least offer. I mean, yeah, be a gentleman, sure. I'm for That's that. what I'm saying. I'm Chivalry. I don't. I don't think ultra. I don't need my door opened. You know some shit from back in the day that was just too much. Sorry. No, I don't need I my door. Doing, you know what I'm saying? Just like women. I don't like some old school guys having yes. their head that barefoot, cook clean. Do your motherly duties and that's that. You can't have a career of your own. Some people yeah. are old school like that. I don't agree with that. You're holding mm. the woman down. You're, you're, you're no, that's what I'm saying. Cut both ways. Because, okay, you can be, want chivalry. Okay, I want my doors opened. I want you to pump the gas. I want you to do all of these things. But then that also means in turn, okay, you're going to, I'm going to fold your underwear and make dinner every night. It goes both ways. Mm. If you're, you can't. It's you're gonna assume those roles or not. Now I think it's important. Here's my thing. I've never assumed you're gonna do my laundry or full my no. underwear. I've done my, I do my own. No one, here's this uh, is my take on that whole thing, on taking care of your spouse and things. If you're equally different. busy, you're equally busy people. You're trying to run the household. I think you should partner and run the household together. I don't think now if you were the one who was working and I wasn't <clears> working. And I was like staying home, taking care of kids or whatever. Then I would feel it would be my duty to to pick up more slack. If you were out working and I'm at home more, I would do more. Yeah. But I think it should be equal. I think that things should be equal. I don't like in terms of getting things done around the house and things like that. Yeah. Got to divide and conquer. Te yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. It shouldn't be like, okay, so if you've got two individuals... Male and female. They both work full time. They're super busy. Both. It's not okay to then just assume that the wife is going to take care of all the household wifey duties because the, that's what's been done in the, since the 50s, right? She's going to be come home and make dinner and clean yes. and mop the floor and clean the bathrooms yeah. because you're the man. Do the dishes. No, sorry. You're both working equally. If you want that toilets cleaned and all of that then the wife doesn't shouldn't have to work because that would be then her job to run the household if she wasn't working if she's out working then yeah. everything else is 50 50 that you should be both contributing it shouldn't be like oh i'm a man so i'm not gonna make dinner or i'm not gonna clean the toilet bowl or at least put the dishes away or something no more than that and you know what you don't get a a, a the pom-poms for doing it either that's what that irritates me is when there's duties that just need to be done. And mostly it's done, say, by one person, say the wife. And the minute that the husband does it, he wants to kudos. Like hey, I empty the dishwasher. It's okay. It gets emptied twice a day, every day. <laughs> who, else, who do you think does it every other time? You don't get you don't get brownie points for that. Yeah. It's just like about like common sense and living together. Yeah. Keeping the household clean, picking up. You see something? Oh, she's going to pick it up, so I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you see something, do something. Yeah. If I'm in the kitchen and I'm cleaning up the kitchen or like I, I have a dish and I go to put it in the dishwasher and the dishwasher is full but clean, yeah. I just bought myself a ticket to empty that dishwasher. Now, if I close the dishwasher and then just wash my little plate individually hand wash it that's a little sneaky because i'm just hoping someone else will empty the dishwasher yeah i see what you're saying do you do that sometimes no you empty the dishwasher yeah. you're good about emptying the dishwasher don't bother me out of all the chores that i hate the Throw most the garbage out it don't bother me emptying the dishwasher is one of them i can't i hate emptying the it's dishwasher. crazy the assumption that women are supposed to stay in the kitchen like bro like I, you don't even cook for me i cook my own food I, yeah i don't I make my own little meals yeah because you have your own, because you're eating your own menu yep. plan and your own stuff. So I don't. I, we're, yeah, because we, I make you stuff stum sometimes, or if you yeah. ask me to make you, like, oh, make me one of those, I'll make it. But yeah. we all eat our own style. 
Yeah. We eat our own way. And that's what, when you live in a house full of, we're in a house full of adults. Yes, we are. So it's different. It's not like we have, it wasn't like that early on for me. Obviously, I made dinner, the kids, when they were kids, of and stuff like that. Yes. But I gladly don't have to do that anymore. Mm. And I'm, it's nice. Everybody's on their own macro plan, eating what they're and supposed to. And the different to. schedules. You eat dinner like when I go to bed. Yeah, exactly. It's so crazy. Anyways, I don't think chivalry is dead. Here's my... No. My, let's round out chivalry. I don't think it's dead, but I do think it's important with your partner to figure out what's important to them and do those things. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't need my car doors open and things like that. You know, my gas pump, maybe sometimes it depends if it's cold. If it's really cold or something, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to get out there and do it. Um... You know, things like that, but not. I'm not super stickler. Now, I do think it's important to anticipate needs, though. So, like, these kind of things are important to me. Like, if you see me coming in with a handful of groceries to run and help me, grab the bags out of my hands or things like that. Anticipating common sense needs. You know not what I mean? Everybody has that, though. No. A lot of people don't have that. No. Or instincts. No, or opening the door for like an elderly person. You see them struggling or yeah. holding the door open. Those are the things. Like, I'm yes. fine. It's like those things to me. Yes. Little things. Like you open the gate for me sometimes when it's raining or Many an ugly times. day. In yeah, the morning. That's what I'm Always saying. dumping, yeah. I run out there and open the gate. But it you. doesn't have to be all, the, like every single time is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like anticipating the need because... Oh, it's extra cold today, so I'm going to do it for her. Or she didn't sleep well last night, so I'm going to take the dogs out this morning, let her sleep a few extra minutes. Mm -hmm. That's what's important to me. So chivalry is not dead. It's just changing, in my opinion. Common sense, too, man. People don't be having common sense. All right. So guess what, guys? I know you probably are tired of talking about this topic, but it has to be said because it's a hot hot button in the weight loss world right now, and I want to cover... Some more stuff that I've been hearing about Ozempic. Uh oh. So there's Ozempic. this big, like, outrage. Obviously, we know about people using Ozempic for weight loss, and there's a bunch of people who are coming out saying that Ozempic is actually making people fatter. And it, they're saying that because the type of weight loss that people are experiencing from Ozempic are. It's like a 75-25, meaning 75% is from muscle loss, 25% is from fat loss. Oh, that's not So I good. saw that. So I thought, oh my gosh, like this is not, this, that's not good. So I did a little more digging into the, is this factual? Who's saying it? Yeah. Where's the information coming from? Who's Found this? some other doctors. And this is what I gather. I gather when you hear anything about Ozempic... For weight loss, whether the positives, the negatives, using semaglutide, right? Peptide for weight loss. It's important to figure out who is telling you the information and what they have to gain or lose yes. from this. Always. Ozempic is causing people in, people are resorting to spending their money on the medication and yeah. not fitness trainers and things yes. like that because it's expensive medication. The people that are the most fearful, they want to make sure they want to say like how bad it is. It's bad. You're going to lose a lot of muscle. You're along with the fat or whatever. The truth is the our bodies are pretty smart about knowing to use fat storage over muscle storage mm -hmm. in the majority. So unless there is extreme malnutrition and a lack of protein you will lose a combination of both. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be heavily muscle and then just a little bit of fat. It, but you will lose both for yeah. sure. But just be aware that the people that are really fear-mongering, they stand to lose by yep. a lot of people taking Ozempic. So it, there's always a little bit of truth that's exaggerated to fit their narrative. To fit the narrative. There's I'm always really, a narrative. Tr really trying to be very objective and very not try to, you know, form an opinion that is only good to benefit me. Yeah. I'm trying to really educate myself on it just because it's important. Because I know 
I need to be really educated on this because yes. not only for now helping everybody who listens to this show, but for the people that are going to encounter problems and things when they come off of it. Yep. And I want to be a resource to be able to help. So I've, I've really been listening to a lot of information, reading a lot of information about it. So remember that. Consider the source because a lot of people, they don't like that people are turning to medication. I still am very convinced that it's not the ideal solution for vanity weight loss. It really is not. There's a lot of side no, effects. No, because you got to think about this, especially when it comes to muscle and fat loss. Va for vanity weight, you it's only a, like 10, 15 pounds, right? You only want, you don't have a lot of fat storage when you need to lose vanity weight. Yeah. You don't have a lot of body fat. So when you under eat, the vanity people are going to lose more muscle yes, than are. the obese people. True. It is made for obesity. It's going to work more effectively for people with true obesity. If I were to go on Ozempic to lose like, oh, let me try to lose 10 pounds five of it would be fat maybe and five of it would be muscle do you know how long it takes to put on five pounds of muscle yeah it's hard even that's for like, men it's that's hard. like that's like a, a year, year of, of the gym. hard work like really grinding to get that muscle yeah. back a year yeah to lose it that's a good year too that's you're on point with your diet you're training that, hard your and protein that's take. a reason why if you're thinking about losing it for using it for vanity weight you really want to think about that because that's not worth it for a, to like, lose five pounds of fat, to lose 10 pounds when only five of it being fat and losing five valued pounds of muscle. Yes. Because guess what goes down with the muscle? When you lose the muscle, your metabolism is going to drop. Yep. Now you're going to slow that down. Now you're going to get that weight back. It's going to creep eventually. You're going to slow your metabolism down <laughs> by losing the muscle. And then you're going to get your appetite's going to go through the roof when you start because you're not going to take the medication long term because you're not taking it for the disease of obesity you're going to stop taking it you're going to gain it back those are the people that i'm trying to really educate myself for because those are the people who are going to need me yes for sure and they're going to end up worse than they started because right. you, you deprive your body and then all of a sudden boom exactly it reminds me of the biggest losers the yeah, show where they no, were exactly. extreme to the point they were where they like had, forced they had doctors on the show because, to, yeah. to monitor their health it was right. that severe and majority 90 plus percent of them ended up worse mm -hmm. gained more weight and then back gained the weight back and then more that's what's going to happen to a lot of the people who are taking the ozempic for vanity weight trying to cheat the game now for obesity this is pretty strong opinion or pretty strong theories is that you need to take it long term. It's a forever. Damn. So if you get diagnosed with obesity, you are on some form of this medication forever or the obesity will return. Whoa. And so you have to really think about that. It's not the lar the highest dosage. They taper down to a maintenance dosage and, yeah. and you stay on that for the the long run. It's it's treated like a disease. If you had diabetes or a heart condition or... Well, it leads to all that. Yeah, exactly. All that. Yeah. But they're treating it like that. So you have to think when you're going to... If you're going to take the medication, you really need to consider taking it long-term slash forever if you really want to keep the weight off or things will revert back most likely. So that is the latest. So don't necessarily believe the hype, though. Don't let people... Fear you, fear monger you into not taking it if you are obese and you're considering it because, oh, you're going to lose muscle and not fat. You're, our bodies are actually v designed to, they it knows, they're very smart. It's going to use fat storage. Muscle is a last resort kind of thing. Yeah. And though, if you want to minimize that, if you want to minimize the muscle loss, then you really need to... Uh, prioritize protein and it's difficult because when you're not hungry and you don't want to eat prioritizing protein is difficult a piece of meat sounds gross when you don't want to eat protein yeah you know but you what i would recommend shakes. especially if you don't have a lot of appetite liquid yes shakes. liquid yeah liquid protein i do that when it, i'm not hungry a and lot I need easier protein. to stomach yeah mm -hmm. i'll slam a protein shake yeah because it's on, on the flip side if you're in a calorie deficit don't 
drink, don't have your calories liquid because it doesn't keep you full. I mean, it doesn't really satisfy you. Yeah. No. But if you are struggling, if you're a bariatric patient or on Ozempic and you're struggling with your appetite, but you need to get that protein in, it's a great way is liquid form of protein. That's going to be a great way. Also take BCAAs. You need to get in front of the muscle loss so that you don't have a lot of muscle loss, but rest assured your body knows what it's doing. You're not going to lose all of your muscle tissue and just be a, a bag of skin and fat, which is what these people would make you believe on these TikToks. Yeah. Then you're like, wait a minute. If I lost you know, 75, 25, that's a lot. That's the what they're saying. disparity is huge. The 75, 25. It might be that for people that are like me. If I were to try to take Ozempic, if I lost 10 pounds, maybe seven and a half pounds of it would be muscle and two and a half would be fat. Because all of a sudden I'm eating 900 calories a day and none of it's protein because I could hardly even get the 900 calories down or yeah. 800 calories. Yeah. One of my clients that's on it, she said she could barely get in 800 calories and she doesn't want protein. I'm like, oh, you got to get the protein. Liquid. In. You better force it. You, you better, better force it or this is not going to end well. No. There's like a give and take with things, huh, in life? Yeah, it's There's not. It's always something. You it's give never, up something to get something. Yes. It's not to get off topic. Those damn commercials for something HIV or something. They always show the people are happy. Oh, I'm taking this medication and I can live happily ever after. I'm like, <laughs> are they really fucking happy? Like, they always make them seem happy. No, they have these diseases and sicknesses and they always show them happy. They, like, yeah, they show them like it's, it picking produce at a farmer's yeah. market or something. But then but, it goes into a, the 10 page list of side effects. Yes. Nausea, like, vomiting, diarrhea, heartburn. It's <laughs> worth the squeeze. You got to ask yourself. Yes. And so that's a is perfect, the is the juice worth the squeeze? Worth the and in, squeeze. for most people with actual obesity and especially with a comorbidity, yes, yes. I would say the juice yeah. is probably worth the squeeze. The vanity weight loss, the juice is not worth the squeeze. Okay. You're not going to enjoy food. You're not going to even, you're not going to have the aesthetic look that you nope. probably are looking for. And it's nope. going to be very difficult to maintain. And psychologically, that's going to take its toll too. Yeah. That's the scoop on that. Still, it's ever evolving. It'll be interesting to see. Right. See what else happens. Keep coming out. It's been a hot topic for a while now. Yeah, it has been. What's that been? There is speculation. They'll crack the code someday. There, there is speculation that Lisa Marie Presley was taking like Ozempic type medication prior to her death. Not that led to her death because she also was back on opioids and obviously just had like cardiac arrest of some sort so i had nothing to do with that but she did lose like 60 pounds in a short amount of time in six weeks 50 pounds or something like that in six Dude, weeks she like didn't that's, eat that's almost like short of a miracle to yeah. do that that's a that's a herculean defeat because yeah. even to lose 20 i think i've come closer 15 in a month was hard yeah so you got to understand if she was like her heart already wasn't healthy and you need fuel to live yeah you can't just be like oh i don't have an appetite so i'm not going to eat so great i'm going to lose weight no, when you're not the giving your body nutrients, more, yes. organs shut down. Yes. You, you need. You die. And she lost the weight, I guess, she wanted to get ready for award season. Oh, boy. Because Elvis, she knew she was going to be in the front of the public, and she had put on a lot of weight after her son committed suicide in 2020, mm -hmm. and which is a lot. So anyways, it was really sad. I watched a documentary on it, but there is a speculation that she was on a weight loss, powerful weight loss drug is what they said. And then she had also relapsed into the opioids, but it was pretty sad. Damn. All right. So let's discuss, because I said I was a little down lately. Instead of just accepting being down, I, I'm a researcher. I'm like, okay, when you're in a down mood, what it, what can we do to- Bring bring us up out of that mood, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, important. What can we do? I don't we think do? We, we look into those things enough. No, we just assume we're in a bad mood. That's we'll what it is. We'll just wait for it to pass. No. So I change it. So I started to look up ways like specifically dopamine, like dopamine, serotonin, like how do you boost those things? And you know, it's difficult for someone who like me, who already, I already live a healthy lifestyle. It's hard to find something that's to add into that. Yeah. Because all of the things that you read when it says, what do I do to boost my mood? It says, have a good daily routine exercise, eat a healthy, balanced diet. I'm like, okay, yeah. check, check, sleep well. I do, I do all those things. A little more. Cool. But So it's the obvious things. Like I just said, eat right, have a routine. A routine is critical, actually. A good routine. Everything yeah. we do in life is 
based on having a really good routine. But for me personally, because I have everything there is pretty solid. Two things I honed in on was I need to refocus on my sleep because it has been disrupted with the menopause stuff. Um, But the other thing was music. Remember we just talked about this. Music, yeah. Music is a really good way to release serotonin and dopamine. Yes. And music is something that had fallen out of my life because I started listening just to podcasts. Oh, that happens. And I just forgot. I'm like, gosh, I never listen to music. And then I started to correlate something. Why is it that like the only time I really feel good and like happy is when I'm in my Orange Theory class? It's because I'm listening to music yes. and exercising. Yep. It's a double dopamine whammy. That is true. And that's probably why going to those classes is so important to me. Mm-hmm. I will move my schedule around. I will go come hell or high water. I'm going mm. to my class. And it dawned on me that it's because I get my little fixes there. Yeah. Dopamine, serotonin from exercise and good Your music. happy place. And you come out feeling good afterwards. Yes. A little bit of rush. So, so I put I've, some music on after you yeah, leave. Yeah. So I've decided going. I'm going to try to. I love my podcast. Don't get me wrong. I love listening to podcasts. Yes. I want you guys to continue to listen to podcasts. I do too. But I need to set aside some time for music. So when I get ready, like when I'm blow dry my hair, I'll, I got to remember to play music. Sometimes when I'm driving, I need to do music. Sometimes when I'm just doing chores around the house, I need to have music on. Didn't you do that? Did you ever do it back in the days when you clean the house? I used to music? do it all the time. My mom a lot used of to do, do it. it. Yeah. Danny and I, my brother, we have such fond memories of my mom like cleaning on a Saturday morning and she would put on the grease soundtrack. No way. Yes. And then when and then her and I we would put on the dirty dancing soundtrack when that movie came out. So we would listen to music together quite a bit. She loved listening to music. Back then we didn't have the option for like podcasts and things. And now I think we've gotten away from music. Yeah. Yeah. Podcast is a thing, especially people who commute or in traffic. It's the best. It makes it go by. So I, mean, I know. But so music, you guys, create a playlist of your favorite songs. Have different types of content. Yes. Different mm. genres. Yeah. I listen to all kinds of different music. And so another one regarding dopamine that I thought was very interesting, dopamine and serotonin and just mental health in general, probiotics and digestive enzymes. Doesn't that sound weird? But not. Gut health. There is a direct connection. They call the gut the second brain. It's true. There's a direct connection to your mood. You cannot have good gut health and a good mood. Good gut health, bad gut health, and a good mood. And vice versa. Yeah, gut health is important. It does does affect mental health. They're connected. And it it makes a huge difference. So you got to be... On top of your digestive health, your digestive enzymes, probiotics, prebiotics. That's why, do you notice sometimes... Even if you're regular? You should yeah. take probiotics? Yeah, because it's not just about pooping. It's just about the environment inside of your gut. Because gotcha. it create, there's hormone secretion that happens in your gut. Yeah. And are you getting your serotonin? Do you ever find that you're not hungry right after a workout? Yeah, I know why. You told me why. Serotonin. This is a dr- serotonin in your stomach. Because ser- it releases serotonin in a good way. It's going to make you feel good, going to make you feel happy. Sometimes people throw But it also, it. that serotonin releases in your gut. And that causes nausea. And that's also yep. probably why some people throw up during workouts. They, yeah. It's a mix of adrenaline. And serotonin. It's almost like taking vitamins on an empty stomach. Ooh. Right? Yeah. That hurts. I've done that by accident. What? But vitamins on an empty stomach. Oh, that's the worst. You feel super nauseous. Especially vitamin, fat soluble vitamins. Yeah, you need to take those food. with food. You yes. will not feel good. Right now, I just had a rice cake with almond butter because I wanted to take my yeah take some vitamins. In specifically, if you take it with fat, it'd be really somebody's extreme. probably gonna listen to this, or will be listening to this, and probably gonna laugh with their coffee. Now, damn, I've done that too. What taking vitamins? Yeah, accidentally. Nasty. Yeah. On Sometimes empty you think, oh, I ate an hour ago. It's fine. No, take it with Your food. food. Yes. Like it is the worst. It feeling sucks. it'll stop mm. you in your tracks you won't be able to go work out you won't be nope. able to do anything because you'll feel like absolute crap yep that exactly. is for sure so yeah that was that was interesting though the gut health mm-hmm. piece of things i'm pretty much on top of my gut health i take a the gut health supplement from same, one up 
It's the same people who who have to go number two because they're nervous as hell. It hits them. You That's know? why also. Adrenaline, yeah. right? Yeah, so, so think gonna... about it. It's The brain releases a hormone into the gut, yeah. and then you poop or yes. vomit. Why or do people get, when they get nervous, One why the do they other. go, like, I want to throw up? Yes. Why? It's directly connected. That's cr- out of nowhere. The brain and the gut are yes. directly connected. So if you do not take your, care of your gut health, that could be impacting your mental health severely. So if you have a gluten intolerance, but you continue to eat gluten, if you have lactose intolerant, but you eat it anyway, and you walk around like a bloated puffer fish, you're also impacting your mental health. You're not meant to do that. No. So you have to... Um, I can't remember the doctor's name, but he said you can't have good physical health without having good mental health, and you can't have good mental health without having good physical health. It's true. They both go hand in hand. Can't cut one out the other. Another thing about mood, sunshine. If you can't get sunshine, then you need to be supplementing with vitamin D. Like if you, there's a few days of rain, you're not going to get sun, make sure your vitamin D is on point because mm-hmm. it dips and that will absolutely affect your mood. you can afford to get you some tanning sessions. Yeah, but then there's the health risks of, but. That's true. You got to weigh it out. Yes. One tanning session sometimes will pull you right out of a mood. I know I follow actually. How about sauna sessions? You mean, do they release dopamine? I don't know. My cold showers do. My cold showers are the best. Yeah, that's what other thing I was going to say. So yeah. your cold showers, I'm do going, it's a dopamine dump, right? Since December, six plus months of doing it straight. The only time I took a break was when I had COVID for two days. So share why you should be, it is something you should skip when you're sick, right? Remember yes. we discussed that? Yes. Oh, shoot. Sauna exposure causes a significant release of dopamine. Mm-hmm. Okay. I need to do a that. A sense of euphoria as well as improved mood, mm-hmm. energy, sense of calm, and pain tolerance. I like that. I need to go to the sauna because I can do the sauna. I can do heat. I can't do the cold shower. <laughs> oh, crazy. wow. Cold's the best. Try it out, you guys. Give it a try. Three minutes. It won't kill you. It'll hurt a little bit of sting, but you'll feel good after. You'll feel wide awake and happy. Yes, people say, why do I feel happy after the sauna? Sauna bathing reduces the levels of cortisol in our blood and stimulates the production of serotonin also. And that's why a lot of people will do that after a workout to kind of like balance back out there, bring their cortisol back down, especially if you're doing an evening workout. Because, yes, your cortisol is going to raise during your workout, but you want that to happen. But then you want... You know how like it's hard to go to sleep after you up, an evening yes. workouts because your cortisol levels are still risen. You need to help bring them back down, and so it says this according to. Oh, you sleep like a baby. To this, you do, do do that for twenty minutes after your workout if you can handle it. You'll sleep like a baby. Yeah, we need a sauna at home. That'd be nice. I know, because then you could just go right to bed. Yeah, it's too bad we can't use the gym hot tubs. I ain't using no public hot tub. That's relaxing too. The public hot tub? Yeah, you oh. know, the gym. I don't know why I get grossed out of course, by Of because there's different bodies going in there. It's I really do. just chlorine. I hate overthinking. I hate when my brain starts to, like, Overthink. really think about things. I don't like to think about that. It was funny because I was reading comments on a, a TikTok. There was a lady who was doing teacher gifts on TikTok. She was creating teacher gifts. It was, like, hand homemade cookies and she put them in these cute little bags and there was tons of the video went viral for whatever reason and there was tons of comments people were saying like oh my god no don't give homemade goods to your teacher teachers would never eat homemade goods and then people were like oh yeah i would never eat a cookie that's given to me by my student and then other people were like okay i can see that makes sense right yeah but does it because you go to the bakery and you buy a cookie made by the dude that's right there <laughs> In exactly. the back, you don't know who the hell he is from no. Tom. And you don't know if his hands are clean or what the hell. Right? Going on. You're so assuming. what the hell's the difference? That's true. I just thought it was so funny. It's like, oh God, gross! You're eating a homemade cookie from a student, really? But aren't you're eating a homemade cookie from a complete and total stranger from a bakery? Yes, that's so factual. Very true. <laughs> so what's the difference? You go to a restaurant, you don't get the background check of the cooks that just made your food. Yeah. You don't know their health records. Exactly. You don't know how many times they wash their hands. Yes. And you're that assuming, like, will you're mess with your mind. You're assuming that they're clean and they're washing their hands and they're being careful back there. You're assuming Yeah, but that. think about how many people are just gross. Oh, yeah. 
And do they really care that much to be extra clean if they didn't like wipe their nose a little bit? Especially in a fast food environment, even worse probably. So I thought it was funny because it's, yeah, it's like you care about one thing, but then you don't think about other things. Yeah, I wouldn't want a homemade cookie from a student, but I go to restaurants, I go to bakeries. True. I go to Starbucks. I have no idea who just made that. Exactly. It's just you're assuming. You're just assuming. Anyways, I thought that was funny. That is funny. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, please, if you're enjoying the show, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Join the conversation in the comments. I love conversing with you guys in the YouTube comments. So please go ahead and do that. Yes. And thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. See you.